Abortion continues to be an issue that causes clashes in our culture. Many politicians and media players say the issue is settled in Canada, but other Canadians believe there should be some restrictions on abortion. A new motion picture is going to stir up some controversy on the topic. The film Unplanned will be in theaters March 29th. And here's a sneak peek. Abby Johnson is in the other room. Here. Our first order of business is to present Planned Parenthood's Employee of the Year Award. Abby Johnson. This is Abby. She's our newest volunteer escort. Abby, this is Cheryl D'Alessandro. I'd be the youngest director in Planned Parenthood history. You'll actually be in charge of the abortions at your clinic? I have a chance to make a real difference. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you're still gonna be a baby killer. The only thing that's changed is you, Abby. Can you even hear yourself talk right now about these procedures? These are little babies. I'm not going to apologize for doing a job that helps women in crisis. There's still a part of me that isn't sure. I know. But the one thing that all experts agree on is that at this stage, the fetus can't feel anything. Sorry to bother you, but they need an extra person in the back room. Are you free? I saw it, and it was like it was twisting and fighting for its life. We commend the souls of these hundreds of children and Lord, we pray to end abortion. I really appreciate what you've done for us. I'll not forget it. 22,000 abortions. How do I even comprehend that? Rough day at the office. You can say that. You're making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? To your dad and me. You are our baby from the moment of conception. We are paying you to be a perfect instrument of corporate policy. We are an abortion provider. I can't be a part of this anymore. Everything that they told us is a lie. Don't underestimate the repercussions of this. You gotta be careful. Rhonda, please don't do this! Rhonda! Let me tell you what's gonna happen if you walk through that door. Congratulations, you have made an enemy of one of the most powerful organizations on the planet. Joining me now is Robia Scott, who's one of the stars in the movie. She also happens to be a minister and joins me now from Orange County, California. Welcome to Bridge City News. Hi, Hal. Thanks for having me. Robia, can you first of all briefly share a little bit of your personal story? Now, you were in the entertainment business for years, and then along the way you made a few changes and you actually became a Christian. Tell our viewers a bit about right. that journey. Well, as a teenager, I started dancing and I became a professional and working uh, as a teen. Uh, and then I wound up getting hired by Prince to be the pearl half of the Diamonds and Pearls from his hit album in the 90s. Don't know if you remember that one. Uh, and then I did some TV after that, some acting on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And it was during my time on Buffy that I became a Christian. And very quickly, just sensed that uh, my 20 years in the entertainment industry was coming to an end and that God was transitioning me into ministry. So I walked away from my career, jumped into serving God, jumped into ministry, and that's what I've been doing for the last 15 years. I travel, I speak at churches and conferences, I wrote a book called Counterfeit Comforts, and I really have had no intention of going back to Hollywood, but God had another plan. And it just through a random set of circumstances, I was introduced to the writer-directors of this film, Unplanned. They told me about the movie. I was intrigued. They invited me to audition, and then they cast me in one of the starring roles. Well, let's kind of look over the movie exactly. It's based on the real-life story of Abby Johnson. Tell me more about it. Abby Johnson was a young gal recruited from her college campus by Planned Parenthood. They were there with the booth touting what they like to share, that they're about women's empowerment and uh, you know, health, education, all of that. And uh, Abby was a Christian from a pro-life family, but she was drawn into the idea that she would be helping women. So she went to intern. Uh, I actually play the head of Planned Parenthood. I play her boss in the movie and the face of the organization. Uh, she started interning and then very quickly rose up the ranks until she herself was clinic director. And in the eight years that she was there, she oversaw about 22,000 abortions. 
until one day she was actually taken into the procedure room. She got a look at what she was doing and uh, she realized that she was not dealing with a bunch of cells. She saw in the ultrasound a perfectly formed baby resisting and fighting from being, uh, not to be graphic, but sucked out of the womb. <laughs> and uh, at that point, she, God just opened her eyes and she left Planned Parenthood and is now a pro-life activist. So this story is based on her, on her book. This is a true story. Now you played the role of the clinic director of Planned Parenthood. What was that like? Did you learn anything about the mindset of people who see things maybe a little differently on the pro-choice side of things? Well, Absolutely. I knew a little bit about Planned Parenthood, but obviously when I got this role, I really uh, delved into what the corporation is all about. And I learned a lot that I think this movie is going to reveal and lift the veil that Planned Parenthood is not a place where you can actually go and plan your parenthood. If you're pregnant and you want prenatal care, you want to consider you know, having help becoming a parent, you can't do that at Planned Parenthood. If you go there and you really want to know all your choices, if, if I'm going to be a parent, if I'm going to adopt, you can't do that at Planned Parenthood. They specifically don't even let you see your ultrasound because they know when you do, a mother bonds with her, her baby when she sees the ultrasound. So they purposefully don't do that because they're not really there to give you choices. They're there to give you one choice and to steer you toward abortion. So this was just uh, eye-opening for me and I think will be for many people when they see that the motive behind the company is... is uh, it's about building the company and making a lot of money. Now, is it true that the movie does show an inside look of what actually happens behind the scenes inside of an abortion clinic? It does. It really puts it all up there on screen. It's not gratuitous, um, but it is clear. So I, regardless of what side you stand on, uh, I know for the pro-life side, people that have seen it, they just feel uh, like they knew they were pro-life, but they didn't, they didn't know why necessarily, or they, they, they didn't have the same fire and passion after they saw the movie. And then for pro-choicers as well, I think that uh, for those who really believe in the right to choose, it'd be good for them to see what it is that they're actually choosing and look at it with their eyes and make a more educated decision. Some might argue that the film is trying to judge people who have abortions. Now you've watched the entire film now since it's been edited put together. Does it actually do that? I've seen the film numerous times and no, it doesn't do that at all. This film is not preachy, it's not Christian-y, uh, judgmental, uh, it's not that in any way. It's actually the opposite. Um, it shows the pro-life side in a positive and negative light. It shows the pro-choice side in a positive and negative light. And the end, the end result is really a message of hope, of redemption. It is not to bring shame or condemnation at all, not even a little bit, none. I mean, it should be, it should do the opposite, which is really, uh, if anyone had been through that experience, hopefully this will help them to release any shame or guilt they might still be carrying from that experience. Abby Johnson even won an Employee of the Year Award from Planned Parenthood. What was it that really changed her mind about abortion? Well, it was a specific moment. She had always been on the administration side. And so she was telling women everything that she had been taught that we're not really dealing with a baby, it's just a bunch of cells, until she was taken in for whatever reason, they were shorthanded and she went into a procedure. She had never been in the room for a procedure and she actually held the ultrasound wand while the abortionist was, was about to perform the abortion. And when she did, she saw a perfectly formed baby and she actually saw the baby fighting and trying to resist. And she said to the doctor, oh my goodness, the baby is resisting. And the doctor said, they always do that. That's why I use the ultrasound so I can see what I'm doing. And then she sat there and watched, again, not to be graphic, but she watched the baby piece by piece being pulled out of the womb and then the womb is empty. And it's just such a, I mean, it's so impactful when you see it that you really can't be the same. No matter who goes into the theater, what you believe when you go in, when you leave, you will be changed because it's, it's just uh, it's an extraordinary story. Rabi, it's not uncommon to see news stories vilifying pro-lifers praying outside of abortion clinics. Do you think they can really make a difference? Well, what I love about this film is it shows both sides of the pro-life outside the clinic. It shows those who are the extremists who aren't necessarily dealing in love, <laughs> that are yelling mean things. And then it shows the people that are uh, operating in a very compassionate, loving, Christ-like nature. And that's another aspect that I appreciate about the film. It really shows the whole side of the picture. But what makes Abby have that, that real turnaround 
wasn't obviously people screaming at her as she's going to work. It was the relationship she developed with 40 Days for Life, uh, those that did the prayer vigil, those that were there just in love and compassion. And it did make a difference. A statistic actually in the movie is that when people are praying outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic, they often have a 75% no-show rate. So what do, so you say to a, what do you say to a viewer who might be watching this program right now and say, you know what, I have the right to choose, it's my body. What do you say to that person? Oh my goodness, that's a, that's a deep question. You know, I, I believe that, um, I don't believe personally that we have the right to kill a child, whether it's, you know, a minute old, uh, six months old, nine months old, or even after birth, which... Uh, is where our country in America here has made some choices that uh, you can now in, in the state of New York kill a baby all the way up to birth for any reason at all. And then the Senate just voted that you could actually even terminate a baby after birth, which how we got there, I, I absolutely don't understand. Uh, again, I think when people see this movie, even those who believe in a right to choose, when they see what it is they're actually choosing, I believe it will be eye-opening and it will give uh, it'll give the viewer some things to think about and some things to talk about. Ashley Bratcher plays the part of Abby Johnson in the movie. And I understand that when she let her mother know that she was going to be in the film, her mom revealed a deeply personal story. Are you able to share that? This is an incredible story. Ashley was on set starting to film. She had just been there a few days and it was all last minute. They were right about to start filming the movie and they had not even cast her yet. So once they did, she had to get there and she was going full speed ahead. She hadn't even told her mother that she was doing the movie and, and she called her mom and wanted to share the story and she wanted to be very sensitive with her mom because her mom had told her that uh, prior to having Ashley, she had had an abortion. So Ashley shared with her mom that she was working on this movie. She didn't want her mom to feel condemned. She didn't want her to feel shamed. As she told her the story of Abby Johnson and the role she was playing, her mother broke down hysterical weeping and then confessed to Ashley that when she was pregnant with Ashley, she actually went again to have another abortion. And she was literally on the table, ready to, ready to go forward. And something, God, something uh, just made her change her mind and she got up and left. So, I mean, just to know that God knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end, you know, here Ashley is now, she's really the face of this movie and she almost did not exist. Unfortunately, the Motion Picture Association of America has decided to give an R rating to Unplanned, which is kind of ironic considering that a 13 year old could get an abortion but cannot attend the movie? That is accurate. We received an R rating. We thought we would get an MP13. That would have been more favorable, obviously. Um, the, the team believes that maybe there was a little bit of political uh, action in there to try to block the movie from going forward, but we know it's gonna go forward regardless. And uh, uh, an R rating usually stems from uh, nudity, sexuality, foul language, and violence. And Unplanned has no nudity, it has no sexuality, it has no foul language. But the Motion Picture Association did say by seeing the abortion on screen, they deemed it violent, which was an admission in itself that, you know, they are actually saying abortion is a violent act. So we are very strongly on our team saying this is an R-rated movie that parents do want their teenagers to see, that churches do want to have their congregation attend. For us, R means recommended. It means relevant, it means real, and this is the kind of imagery that uh, it's important. It's the truth up on the screen, and especially, like you said, 13, 14, 15, 16-year-olds. Um, I think it's, it's imperative that these kids um, have a sense of what is going on, because what they're hearing in the mainstream media, what they're hearing at school, is not the truth. So where do you see the abortion debate going over the next few years, and do you think this film will have much of an impact? I absolutely believe that this is a for such a time as this film. The writer-directors actually had the rights to Abby's book for six years. And every time they went forward to start making the movie, they're men of prayer. And God said, nope, not yet. So they put it on the back burner. And then the next year they went to make it again. And God said, not yet. They put it on the back burner again. So this movie could have come out four years ago, three years ago, and it would have been impactful. But finally, they were released to make the movie. And now it's coming out at this time and this season where what's going on in our culture, I mean, this topic is on the forefront. And I believe that this is uh, just going to be, honestly, a weapon of love. Uh, 
to be released through the country and all countries through the world. And I believe it has the potential to, um, to change hearts and to impact culture, to touch people individually and then corporately as a, as a society. Robbie Scott, one of the stars of the movie Unplanned in theaters March 29th. Thanks a lot for joining me today from Orange County, California. Thanks for having me. Take care. And behalf of all of us here at BCN, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless and have a great night.